Hey guys, it's Kellen Void, and today we are gonna be talking about thick subbases. And yeah, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make the sound. Let's get into it. So here we are in Syrup. I got um, all settings on the initial settings basically. And yeah, I'm just uh, gonna start making like a note in F and just work from there and show you like uh, guys some techniques I like to use when making like a uh, fixed up base. So um, the first thing I'm doing it is putting it down to minus three octaves. I know that uh, that depends on how everyone's working. I personally just like to go from the um, from this uh, to work in this octave, so I need to put it uh, down three octaves. But yeah, so as uh, since we are making a very fixed sub base today, uh, we are going to be working a lot with a uh, with saw waves and uh, waves that already have like some harmonic um, information in them. So yeah, let's just start off by shaping the um, ADSR of the sound. Uh, I really uh, like uh, using the envelope actually a lot um, because you have like with just one no uh, with just a few knobs you can shape the sound um, uh, quite easily and you can also automate um, these knobs over time. I mean you could already um, in a, already now with the latest updates in Serum you can already um, do like macros uh, on on those points and modulate those. But I just really like the flexibility of this shape. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be putting this down here. So it nicely evolves over time. The first thing I'm always doing is like making a little low pass filter. The thing with low pass filters is that um, you're always cutting free, uh, high frequencies away and then putting them back in with distortion. But those new um, high frequencies always sound differently and that's kind of the process. You're um, taking away a lot of the frequencies in, high, uh, in the highs and then bringing them back in. So right away I'm gonna be putting the envelope on the filter. To create like a lot of dynamics from like having like the, the high, high high frequencies and then just going back to the low frequencies, and right away I uh, like putting it on the drive as well. So that already gives it like a lot more more punch. Um, so and now I already have like the very first uh, kind of shape for the sound, and I like to work backwards from this point now a little bit. So I'm gonna be closing Serum and already putting effects on it after Serum. So I'm gonna be having like an OTT, um, saturator. So already everything that I do in Serum is already getting affected by by those things. So I already have like a nice um, starting point. So first I will have a saturator, uh, an OTT. Uh, I always like having it that way, mostly, because the saturator adds harmonics and the OTT is evening out those new added um, sounds, so I always have OTTs after saturator, basically. And next off, I will have an EQ, because most of the time you are going to be taking away a lot of the sound in this area, so in the end, usually my, my sub bases usually um, have like a shape like that, and... I think you also need to fix the sound from the OTT uh, uh, a little bit. So um, usually OTT takes away a little bit too much of the sub bass, I think. As you can hear, it sounds pretty thin with the OTT on. So I'm just adding back those 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 frequencies there. And now I have like this chain afterward that's already sculpting the sound. And whatever I do now in Serum is already getting shaped by those by those things. So this is already going somewhere, it's uh, sounding still quite thin. So next off I'm gonna be adding another oscillator and I'm gonna be putting it down two octaves and up seven um, semitones. So now you have like the seventh tone, um, which can be really nice. Let's activate the filter for this oscillator as well. And that's already like really nice sound I think. Um, for basses, you usually also want to be um, the random knobs to be at zero, so it always starts at the same position. And now that the uh, uh, the face is always starting at the same position, you can now play around with the face knob and see um, and listen to the different shapes and maybe say that one shape sounds better for you. So 
I think this sounds thinner. This sounds actually a little thicker. So I'm gonna be going with uh, be going with that. So next off, gonna be adding another distortion. Maybe I'm gonna use the um, the pre-post for this one. You see how it's keeping it warmer because you're only affecting like the low frequencies. Uh, okay, that's already pretty nice. Let's add some noise. So the thing here is that this is not this is getting affected weirdly by, by the volume shape, so I'm gonna be putting this here on here as well. Next off, um, I would actually like to try. Um, so next off, I'm gonna be showing you how to uh, how you could also um, add like a lot of crunch if you add like unison to your to second oscillator. So um, I, my idea is really just to show you guys like all the different kind of techniques that you can use, and then really go into your own um, serum and say, okay, I want those techniques and those techniques, but I don't want those. So uh, maybe you're already happy with this sound. Um, but I want to give you like the option to also consider adding a unison to that. And if you add unison, you need to turn up the random number again because now, because if you collapse down the sound to mono, I'm putting it to mono now, and you have it at zero, you hear how phasey it sounds. I mean, it could be cool, but if you go back to stereo, you don't hear that, but now this it sounds super phasey in mono. I just recently discovered that. So whenever you um, are making a stereo sound and add like um, more voices here, make sure to turn up the randomness here again. Because now the, the mono sound and the stereo sound sound more similar. Otherwise, the mono sound would be super phasey and the, the stereo sound not. So you would want really to for everything to sound the same in mono as well, like like very similar in mono. So um, whenever I add, whenever I add um, more voices, I'm going here into the global settings and turn down the width because right now it's like spread out a lot. And if I collapse that down to mono, um, it's gonna collapse down a lot. So now I turn down the width, so whenever I collapse it down to mono, it's like not too much signals get lost. So I always turn down the unison stereo width a little bit. So it's like the sub bass is not so wide. And now, like, during the whole process, you should always be going back to the knobs you added, like, in the very first place, and see how this affects the sound. So this is going someplace nice. Um, what I also like to be doing is going to the basic shapes and not having like as um, as uh, another saw wave, but actually a square wave here. You hear what that adds? So this is also pretty nice. Um, and yeah, here I uh, like adding like a little bit of a notch filter. This is pretty nice actually. Um, I, I see I see how it might be sounding um, a little thin and now, but uh, in the context of the song, it uh, can really add space like for other sounds there. 
I'm adding another filter there. As I said, it's always about taking away frequencies and then adding them back in. Gonna get rid of the noise for a second here. So right now this is already going a uh, pretty nice place I think. Um, now one important thing that uh, is a very common technique is adding like a little pitch pen to the beginning of your sound. For that um, I like using the second LFO, it doesn't really matter which LFO you take but I just like leaving like the first one um, open so I can use it for other things and always I have all my pitch on envelopes always on the second one. It's just for me to be stay organized pretty much. So what you need to do is create a shape like this, go on envelope mode, shape this one a little bit, then we go to the matrix, go here, select this LFO by going here. Then here we select the destination, which is going to be global master tuning. Now we need to change the type. So it's actually going to, um, to zero and not to minus um, the value, whatever we set here. And here we set the value we want. So I usually go for 24 and let's hear how that sounds. So you hear how the punch increased a lot now. And whatever you're trying to go for, you can um, adjust the ch shape a little so you can have like a very fast attack and then like a little bendy beginning. So that already really makes like um, the sound cut through a lot really. You can play around with the uh, OTT in there as well, but I usually don't like that one too much, but let's see if that can do something nice for the sound. So usually, like I think, um, I don't like the compressor in here too much um, because um, the OTT settings are like too extreme for me and I, whenever I try to take down the mix, the mixing knob is like super bad. Like I really like the amount knob uh, that we have in Ableton, but this one always sounds super crazy. But actually right now... I like the phase analysis of that actually. Let's hear how it sounds if it's more sustained. Now that's already pretty nice, I think. Um, here you can also put the thing into mono, um, select uh, and, and increase the portamento time. So whenever you play like uh, several notes, uh, between notes, it does like this little bendy thing in between, so the notes in between are bending. Um, so yeah, that can be pretty nice. Um, another thing I like to right away already prepare um, for myself is having like a pitch bend that goes up um, and down two octaves. So um, whatever the context of the song is gonna be, I have the, the option to to already have like a pitch knob here available um, at my fingertip basically. And yeah, I think. I think this is pretty much done here. Like, so now what you can do is really like play with all those things, add, adding saturators, taking down frequencies, um, putting them back up in with uh, an OTT. Um, take all those techniques and change the orders, change the cut of frequencies, and um, this can already um, impact the sound a lot. And you have a lot to um, a lot of options that are open to you from from here on. So. 
yeah, I hope you liked those tips. I hope um, there are like some little techniques that help you um, improve your sub bases, uh, especially if you're going for fixed sub bases like this um, with a lot of um, frequency content and the highs as well and the mid highs. So yeah, this uh, that's it for today's video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to learn more tips from me um, going into this direction we are going to be covering um, more production videos in the future tutorials and breakdowns about my songs um, techniques that i use creative processes that i'm using so make sure sure to stay tuned there and yeah see you in the next video bye